Now, okay, let's continue with question number 10, okay? Regarding the MRS, uh, we should know that the MRS is, by definition, the slope of indifference curve at any point, x, y, okay? That's the definition of the MRS. Uh, it could be a proof that, uh, in fact, we, we do in, in some uh, principles of, of micro, uh, that uh, the MRS is calculated like this, okay? We just calculate it, but it could be proved. I don't do it here in the solutions, but uh, it could be proved, okay? So A is also true. That's how we calculate it when it exists, of course, okay? So uh, it measures the rate of change between two goods that keeps constant the utility of the consumer, yes? That's the economic interpretation of the MRS, very, very important. So clearly, I think, clearly, uh, the correct one is D, okay? Well, now, number 11, also regarding the MRS, this is not as easy as the previous one, but uh, it also should be easy, okay? Um, the MRS is decreasing in absolute values when the indifference curves are convex. Yes, that's true. Uh, this is a very important uh, property of the MRS. Mm, when the indifference curves are convex, for example, in the Cobb Douglas case, okay, Cobb Douglas case, we have that the slope, as we said, is the definition of the MRS, the slope is um, decreasing when we go to the to the right, okay? Here the slope maybe uh, is 2 in absolute value, here the slope is uh, 0.4, so mm, the slope decreases, yeah? That's the that's because the, the curve is convex. Uh, is it always decreasing? No, no. For example, in perfect complements it doesn't exist in some points, okay? So C is false, and in perfect substitute uh, it's not zero, in perfect substitute it's constant, so it it's not decreasing, yeah? Uh, as we know, perfect complements have these inks where the slope doesn't exist, so the MRS doesn't exist. And in perfect substitute, the slope is constant, so the MRS is constant, yeah? So clearly, clearly, I think, is A. But this is very important, okay? Even if it's easy for you, I recommend you to, to re remember this this question. Okay, mm, 12. About the budget constraint. The budget constraint becomes steeper when the price of any good increases. Mm, no, be careful. When the price of good X increases, it becomes steeper, but when the price of good X, uh, Y, sorry, increases, it becomes flatter. Uh, so, mm, I've already told you that mm, this is the correct one okay uh, you all should know this from from principles of micro but we will show it here okay uh, when the price of good x or good x1 increases for example from p1 to p1 prime okay with p1 prime so uh, higher than p1 what happens the slope the slope uh, is higher okay the slope initially was P1 in absolute value divided by P2, and now it's P1 prime divided by P2. As this is higher than before, so the slope is higher than before. Okay. Uh, another way to see is that uh, that the uh, well this intersection point. Sorry, what's written here? Uh, this intersection point. Uh, becomes smaller as P1 increases because it's in the down part, yeah? Uh, and I tell you here that it also would become steeper if the price of good X2 decreased, as I told you before, okay? Then the term of the uh, budget constraint, it wouldn't be like this, with this fixed point, but it would be with this fixed point. And when P2 was uh, smaller, this ratio would be higher, so it would be like uh, here, for example, this uh, intersection point uh, coming through here, the budget line, and uh, resulting in a steeper 
budget line okay very easy but very important question okay in with this kind of uh, of modifications also that we should know okay now 13 this is maybe the most difficult uh, question until until now okay the budget line shifts outwards when both prices increase at the same time mm, no it shifts uh, inwards uh, and uh, what well, we should uh, we should look uh, if uh, how, or how those increase are those increases are sorry it shifts outwards when both prices decrease at the same time uh, yes yes this is true mm, but uh, be careful be careful I would I, I will show you now uh, because maybe it's not very easy um, well we will see it let's suppose uh, well I did you hear with an increase uh, in the, the proof I mean with an increase uh, at the same rate okay we will see that with an increase at the same rate the budget constraint shift inwards shift to the left so uh, when the prices decrease it shifts it shifts to the right outwards okay so if the initial uh, budget constraint is this one the slope would be this okay now prices let's suppose that they increase okay uh, i told you that i would do with an increase in prices uh, the new prices are so one plus r times the previous ones uh, the budget constraint the new budget constraint with these new prices if i substitute them i have uh, one plus r times px one plus r times py and i can take out the common factor one plus r then uh, i could um, take it to the right hand side dividing and have this or get this new budget constraint as we can see the left hand part is the same as the initial yeah so the slope doesn't change that means that the shift the shift is parallel okay the new curve is parallel to the previous one and um, as we can see the income is like uh, smaller than before okay uh, so when prices increase for me at the same rate uh, the situation is the same as um, leaving the prices constant but uh, having less money okay that's the what, what we call pérdida de poder adquisitivo yeah okay the prices uh, if the prices increase but my wage or my income remains the same i am uh, i am poor yeah so uh, we have uh, a shift parallel to uh, to the left okay to inwards so when prices decrease uh, it is uh, outwards yeah well, maybe I should have put here a graph, but I didn't, sorry. Okay, now, 14th. Mm, two goods are perfect substitutes for a consumer. Okay, so, his optimal bundle will always be a kind of solution. No, be careful. Uh, almost always, maybe, maybe, but not always, okay? Uh, as I tell you always, if I find uh, the Coca-Cola uh, two euros and Pepsi, uh, one euro, and I like Coca Cola always the double, so I could consume some cans of uh, cola and some cans of Pepsi. Yeah? He doesn't care consuming one good or the other one, yes, uh, he cares. Uh, well, uh, he may substitute them, but uh, not exactly one to one, I mean, okay. Uh, maybe that substitution is one to two, uh, that ratio, or uh, as in my example of Coca Cola and Pepsi. Right? So, uh, his utility function is Cobb Douglas type? No, of course not. <laughs> so, uh, she, she or he could consume positive quantities of both goods for a particular price ratio? Yes, of course, of course. I told you with the example, be very careful. Uh, graphically, graphically, the 
The point is that um, the um, indifference curves are parallel to the budget constraint. Yeah? Mathematically, uh, well, when we have GMRS, uh, that we know that for perfect uh, substitute is complement, uh, it's constant, sorry, equal to the price ratio, if we write the MRS as we know uh, this way, and then we take the marginal utility of y to the uh, right and px to the left, we can see that this is economical. This is economical uh, point of view of this of this situation. Okay, um, how do we read this? Okay, the extra utility I get for each uh, euro I spend on a perfect substitute good is equal to the marginal utility of uh, the extra uh, utility i get for an next uh, for each euro for ex extra euro sorry i spent on good y okay when these goods are perfect substitute we say every extra euro okay because all the euros i spent on good x or on good y give me the same utility the same extra utility level okay so uh, my utility increases the same for each euro I spent on X, but it increases uh, or as it increases for each extra euro I spent on good Y. So I don't mind consuming um, all my money in one good or all my money on the other good, or even some of uh, a part of my money, of my income in good X and the other part of my income in good Y. Okay. Well. When Thara raised prices in its shops in Manhattan, it increased her sales uh, or its sales. This case reflects the existence of okay, uh, giving goods. Yeah, uh, giving good is a kind of good that when you increase its price, you sell it more. Okay, so the demand increases. The demand would be uh, very strange. Okay, it would be increasing. Be careful. And okay, I think it's easy because uh, it also you should know also from principles of Micro. Yeah? Two indifference curves can never cut because of the transitivity property of preferences. If A and D, let's look at the graph, okay? If A and D are equally preferred to E, okay, so they are because they lay at the same indifference curve and B and C are equally preferred to E, okay, then all A, B, C and D should be equally preferred and hence they should lie at the same indifference curve. Yes, this is, uh, this is true. And this is true because the, transit the transitivity property, sorry, uh, tells me that, um, uh, that if C, uh, is preferred to A, it should be in a different uh, different curve, yeah? Uh, so, if A and D and E are at the same difference curve, C and B and E also they are at the same difference curve, they should lay at the same difference curve. So, this graph is not possible, yeah? So, A is true. Uh, because more is better than less. Uh, yes, this strange sentence is true. Uh, it could be um, described better as the principle of um, desirability. Yeah, I think it's called like that, the principle of desirability. Uh, so it's true, and then it should be D. Yeah, because the utility function gives us a unique utility level for each bundle. Yes, of course. Uh, well, from mathematics, what is a function? A function is a law that uh, gives us for uh, different well for for a, for the same for the same point at the domain uh, a unique uh, image no? a unique uh, level of the function so it can't have two uh, two values that function okay if two indifference curve cut that's impossible that's impossible uh, if this uh, from a d is a utility level with uh, with um, in difference curve, sorry, with utility level one, and this other curve is in difference curve of utility level two. So at point E, we should have utility level one and two at the same time. That's that's impossible. 
Now, 17. Mm, a point QP at the market demand curve tells approximately uh, the per unit price P the consumer uh, the consumers are willing to pay for the last unit Q. Yes, that's correct. Tells approximately the quantity Q the consumers want to buy if the per unit price is P. Yes, that's correct. That's how we uh, read mm, the demand curve uh, or the Q. Uh, uh, when the Q is isolated, yeah, and this A is how we re read it when uh, P is isolated. Okay, tells the price in monetary units the market is willing to pay for the first Q unit. Mm, well, uh, yes, that's that's correct because uh, we can uh, we can have uh, all the all the curve telling this to us. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, I didn't I didn't read it uh, properly. I didn't, didn't read it read it properly. This is false. This is false. Sorry. The tells the price of monetary units the market is willing to pay for the first Q units. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is the area below the demand curve. Okay. Well, uh, as I didn't do it, okay, I will show you in the, in this graph. For example, um, if uh, we want to buy one point five units. Uh, for the last unit, uh, I am willing to pay, or the market is willing to pay 60 US per unit, okay? But for the whole 1.5 unit, the market is willing to pay the area below that, uh, that demand curve, sorry. So uh, the correct one is D, yeah? Here. Now, this is also a question for principles of Mika, so. The income effect, okay. Mm, this is the definition of the income effect, so be very careful because it's not easy. Okay, um, the income effect is the change in demand of a good due to the change in the price of that good. Uh, no, that's the total effect. Yeah, that's what we can see how the consumption of that good uh, varies when the price uh, changes. Okay, is the change in the demand of a good due to the change in the purchasing power. Ah, that was the name, purchasing power to, to the capacidad uh, poder adquisitivo. I didn't remember, sorry, purchasing power. Uh, so is the change in the demand of a good due to the change in the purchasing power? Yeah, that's the income effect. And C is the change in the demand of uh, a good due to the change in the relative prices. That's the substitution effect, okay? Mm, so the total effect, uh, can be described as the sum or the substitution effect and the income effect. Okay, what we want uh, with this um, disaggregation or is that uh, is see how um, what happens can be seen due to these two factors or causes. Okay, due to um, that when one good becomes um, becomes more expensive. I see the other one as cheaper, okay? That's the substitution, what tells me the substitution effect, sorry. And um, on the other hand, when one good increases its price, I become uh, poorer, okay? Uh, my purchasing power decreases. So that's what um, the income effect tries to tell me, okay? So in this uh, situation, this Question 18, the correct one is B. Uh, well, when the cross elasticity between two goods is negative, well, uh, if the cross elasticity is negative, uh, the cross elasticity is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of one good, for example, S, as the price of other good increases. If this is negative, is because uh, they are uh, complements, yeah? Uh, for example, uh, mobile phone cases and mobile phones, okay? If the price of uh, mobile phones increases, yeah, people will demand less mobile phones because it's an ordinary good, yeah? And then less uh, mobile phone cases will be demanded, okay? Uh, so at the end, if the price of good Y increases, the quantity demanded for good X decreases. So this happens for uh, 
complementiem.